What's up, guys? Today we have this. It's the Quick Set Halo Touch Fingerprint Smart Lock. Today I will be unboxing it and installing it uh, on my on my door. Easy as that. That didn't go as I wanted it to. Let's try that again. Now, first I want to show you what we get in the box. And then I will get onto the installation. Right, in the box. Oh, the first thing you get is the fingerprint module. Here it is. And also there's a keyhole, so if you want to use a key to unlock it, go ahead. Now, beneath that, you get a set of instructions. You don't need that. Maybe we do. I don't know. Here, box number one. Let's go in order. We get the deadbolt because this, after all, is a deadbolt. I'm not sure if they make a fingerprint, um, you know, handle or whatever. And then the screws for the deadbolt. Okay. Box number two, we get very long screws and the wall plate. Box number three, we get what looks to be a mounting bracket along with the keys. This looks like what secures the front of it to the to the uh, door. And, yeah, and then you mount the back one later. And then here are the screws. And finally, the, in the included keys. <clears throat> All right. Box number four. A lot of boxes. You get one thing, uh, well, actually two things, some very small screws. Uh, we'll figure out what that's for later. Maybe we do need the instructions. Box number five, the last box. You get batteries and a very small screw, three very small screws, and finally the smart key, which we'll be using. We'll definitely be using the smart key. And then underneath the last one, you get the face plate and the computer. Well, I call it a computer and that should be used lightly because it's kind of what just controls the, the whole thing, you know, what, what you use to unlock it. Like, like kind of what powers it. Great. Now, now that we have everything out, let's get to the installation. But let me let, let me just lay out all the parts in in order and attempt to go over all of them. In some order, I don't know. Knife not included. Right. So, starting with this is the face plate and the thing you use to turn it. Here is the, the batteries, the battery tray. Here we have the fingerprint scanner and the keyhole, the keyhole and the, you know, the, the, the mechanical key. Let's just see if it worked. Hold on. Yep, it works. See? The included key works. One time I bought a lock that the key didn't work with. 
Anyway, the computer, we'll call it that because I don't have another name for it. The battery, the deadbolt, a bracket, possibly for mounting, probably for mounting this to the door and then putting this over it. Uh, two thick screws, I'm assuming it's for that. Um, that wall, well, actually a door frame bracket. They call this a strike plate or something, but that, I'm not sure. That might only apply to, um, you know, the regular door handle, not the deadbolt. Oh, if you are wondering, this deadbolt, I believe, is adjustable. Let's see. Yep, it's adjustable for longer doors. You know, you just twist it. I think we have a smaller one. And then a bunch of screws for installing it. We'll go over that. Anyway, you also need an app. You need, so you'll need a phone. So I'm going to have to film a phone with a phone because I am, after all, recording with a phone. Anyway, let's get to the installation. All right, so here we have my door. Um, all right, if I remember correctly, did flip through the instructions. This goes in first, the deadbolt itself. Leave it extended. And now get a Phillips head screwdriver. Take these, this length of screw, not sure what length that is specifically, but the second longest type of screw included. And just, you know, tighten both of them down, you know. One done, just the other to go. You know, the wood inside this door is, feels kind of disintegrating because it is, um, the screw is kind of slipping. Not because I'm turning it too far, but whatever, as long as it holds me. All right. Now, get this. The fingerprint slash uh, keyhole thing that contains the keyhole lock itself. Just kind of wiggle it up here, um, keeping the cable underneath. So don't route it over, just let it roll, go underneath its natural kind of way. Um, this is kind of hard for someone like me who is right-handed, but you gotta somehow all right, I'm going to change the camera angle. Uh, I don't want any of this. To, actually, I have an idea to not let that drop. Give me a second. I'm going to use some tape to tape this while holding it as straight as I can to the door. Like so. That should prevent it from falling down while I adjust the camera angle. Alright, once I get these two screws, yep, gotta work. don't forget about that. There are two screws, but these really thick ones, just grab the thickest screws they include. All right, and run them through all the way, these two holes in the side, right. And now, once you get them kind of tightened in, you can remove the tape because it won't fall down. It's held in, you know, just all right with the screws here. Now, it's optional, but if you really want it to be straight, on the other side, you know, level, that's the right word. You want it to be level. You can take, well, what they call a level. <laughs> you know, that thing with the little bubble in there that will tell you whether what you install is straight or not, you know. And put it up against here. So, let me grab mine.
Right, this is the level. The one with the little bubble in there. All right, that is as straight as, as it's gonna get. Like I said, this will be hard as someone, as someone who is right-handed. I have to use my left hand, tighten in the screws. It actually depends on the orientation of your door. If the all the mechanical stuff is on the right-hand side, then you have to use your left hand to do this. But if all the mechanical stuff is on the left-hand side, you can use your right hand to do this. It'll be much easier. So I just... get it into place again because I shifted it. It was perfect. And now just hold the door straight. Use my foot and hold the door, prevent it from moving. I actually want to check if this is straight because that means the next thing we're installing won't be. It Need to make an adjustment. Okay. I also hope the other side stayed where it is. And it did. Okay. So now just tighten it down. No need to worry. Good. It's been tightened. Good. Now we can install the next thing, which is this. The, well, what I call the computer. You know, it probably has a proper name. We'll call it that for now. So the excess wire can be stuffed back in there. Like that. It shouldn't affect uh, how it moves. Kind of like that. Not sure why they make this connector so big, considering the limited amount of space that I have. Okay, even though the wire is bent at such an angle, it should still work. As much as I don't want to do that. I mean, it works, so. Good. Now, um, let's see. And I forget which ones are we going to screw in there. Looks like the bottom ones. So there are two screws on the bottom that we need to put in there, that would be these. These ones, unless they go here. Nope, these are the right ones. All right, they go in the bottom holes. Right, one of them is installed. Now let's do the other one really quick. Right, I have one on the other side that I'm about to do. Same thing. 
except this one's on the other side. All right, holding the door where it is, it's steady. All right, so we got this computer installed. Now, we're gonna install a face plate. First, I'll remove this, because we'll need to put the batteries in later. Do it like so. There are two smaller screws that are also included in the package. They look like this. They don't have a sharp point at the end. Installed. And I just do the other side, same thing, but on the other side. Great. Okay. Great. Next, that, that one's installed now. And now here's the, actually, weirdly enough, the most difficult part. That is um, getting it working with the app. Okay. That seems to be working. Don't need that tape anymore. Let's see if the original key works. Yeah, that works. So let's unlock it and uh, just tap the, oh, that's why, because I haven't set up a fingerprint yet. Okay, so. I'm gonna download the app. It's just, I think it's just called Quickset and uh, start setting it up. Now, check your smartphone's connected to the internet. Check, turn on your smartphone's Bluetooth. Stay within Bluetooth range of the lock. Uh, yeah, Wi Fi and Bluetooth is on. Uh, now, remove the black window or interior cover. I did. Press and hold the A button for three seconds. Release it when it when it beeps once, eh. and the LED flashes blue. It is flashing blue as you can see. Searching, oh, there it is. Did it light up and make a sound? Yes, it did. You heard that too. Yeah, pair. It made another sound. Um, oh, there's a firmware update. Okay, let it update. So, I'll get back to you when this is done, or if it fails, or what. I don't know. It look like it's making some green progress. Anyway, I'll get back to you. Alright, guys. It successfully updated the firmware. That's what it says on my phone. Let's go. Name the lock. Okay, let's give it a name. That sounds appropriate. Please follow the instructions. Make sure you have a home Wi-Fi route. Yes, I do. So yeah, there is a Wi-Fi card in there. It's searching though. It's taking it. Oh, there you go. Found some. Oh, there it is. Okay. 
checking if it's connected. Okay, it's connected. Now connecting to the cloud, which is, I guess, quick set servers somewhere. I'll let it connect. It is not it's not flashing any colors yet. So the known colors it can flash are red, uh, green, blue, possibly orange. I've seen orange before. So now it's activating the lock, so I guess. I guess so, I don't know. Yeah, because the thing is, oh, okay, success. Thing is, uh, you can, you can unlock it from anywhere in the world at any time for someone who needs to enter your home. Right. So complete. And it says, here's a quick tour to have to proceed. No, no. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna tap lock. So it has just, it just locked on its own. Oh, actually, I press the button. Let's press unlock. Look at that. You can, like I said, you can unlock it anywhere in the world for anybody. So, let's let's add a fingerprint. Let's add a fingerprint. Okay. Right. Okay, so scan your fingerprint. Make sure the sensor and your finger are dry and clean. Let's see my thumb. That looks pretty dry and clean. And now let's see the sensor. Actually, I'm gonna reposition it. So. Oh, I think it timed out. Let's retry. All right. Oh, I have to follow the instructions on the phone. So it's lift, then press again. Great. Let's add another finger. My index finger. Cool. Fingerprint successfully added. Done. Okay. So we just locked it and let's see if it'll unlock. No, come on. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so it unlocked. Perfect. Okay. So each profile, uh, according to this, says you can only store two fingerprints on the profile, but you can have 50 profiles. So I just said, for example, Morris 1, Morris 2. So that means you can actually have up to Morris 5 for all, five, all 10 of my fingers. So that's interesting. So let's create a number 2 to add my left hand, see if it'll, it'll recognize it at any time. Okay, and it's asking me. Okay, add another finger.
hopefully that's good. When I was setting up this iPhone, I had to scan my finger a lot more than three times. Okay, let's see if they both work, because I'm my left hand is not as steady as my right hand is. So I'm gonna lock it. It works, cool. All right, now I'm gonna test my thumb, see if it works. So I'm gonna lock it one more time. Okay, it works. And to lock it, anyone can lock your door. So I'm gonna now use something I didn't test. Let's say my palm. See, still locks. But to unlock it, I can't put my palm on there. It will tell me I'm wrong. But I can use something I did program, such as, well, my thumb, which I did program. So that is how you program and use the um, Quickset Halo Touch Smart Lock. And uh, now I'm going to reprogram the keys. As I told you, I will do a test of the smart key. So let me grab the one I'm going to program it to, the different key. All right. I have found the instructions for the quick set smart key thing. So I'm gonna take the original key, put it at a 90 degree. Well, put it flat, actually that's 180 degrees. And now you'll need a new key that is smart key compatible. You have to look for this. Or if it's another quick set key, I believe it can be used as a smart key. Now with the the old key still in there, make sure it is actually at a 180 degree angle. You want to stick the smart key tool in there. Press it all the way in. Now you can remove the old key. So now you want to insert the new key. It's all the way in, make sure it's all the way in. And rotate it this far, that's another 180 degrees until the lock deadbolt comes out, and then straight. And now I believe you can remove it. And now our new key works, okay, as you can see. And our old one does not work. As you can see, I can't use the old key. Only the new one works. So, now let's once again test my fingerprint, see if that works. Yes, it does. So now you can use either the key or the fingerprint to unlock this door. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you found this helpful, please sub, um, hit the like button. If you want to see more cool videos, uh, home repair, mostly electronics, uh, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time.